Hello everyone. In our previous sessions, we have done equation of circle and also we have done equations of tangent and normal. So in this session, I continue that, that tangents part to the circle. So in this session, we will be taking common tangents to two circles and later common chord. So let us start first with common tangents. And I am saying common tangents to two circles. So obviously, we will have to start with equations of circle perhaps because we are writing everything in terms of x and y. So if I take two circles given as one as I am writing s1 and that expression I am written as x minus x1 whole square plus y minus y1 whole square. Generally, we write equal to r square but I have written here minus r1 square and I put right hand side 0 so that my, you know, like talking would be easier. I just say s1 equal to 0 is equation of circle. So we are writing minus r1 square there. And similarly, I take other circle as s2 and then I write x minus x2 whole square plus y minus y2 whole square minus r2 square equal to 0. Now, these are two circles. Obviously, you can see from there, center would be of first circle x1, y1. Center of second circle would be x2, y2 and the respective radius would be r1 and r2. So, if I name for my, you know, like convenience, center as c1 of first circle and c2 as second circle. And R1, R2 I am writing as same as radii. Then we may have actually different cases when we are talking about common tangents, right? So I start one by one and then we will count number of tangents in each case and corresponding required condition. Now my first case is when circles do not intersect. When I say circle do not intersect, so picture would be something like this. Center C1 and C2 I am showing two circles which do not intersect. And now we try to draw tangents. One possibility is that you draw tangents like this. Now, these type of tangents, they are called transverse. So, these are transverse common tangent and there is one more possibility and that possibility is from somewhere outside point, you try to draw two tangents, right? So, in all, how many we have? So, these two tangents from point P, what we have, they are named as actually direct common tangents and other two what we had drawn before, they are called transverse tangents. Mind you, please, these are just the names and I personally feel that whenever you learn a topic, you please learn the topic with the respective and authentic names. From picture, now you know what are transverse tangent and also you know what are direct tangents, okay? So, how many tangents in all we have? We have four types of common tangent, two transverse and two, yes, direct, okay? And what from picture you are able to see? In terms of distance C1, C2 and R1 and R2, what I observe here is distance C1, C2 is surely larger than R1 plus R2. So, I have written the condition R1 plus R2 less than distance C1, C2. Mind you, please, those two vertical lines outside C1, C2, what I am writing, they are written for showing distance. I hope you remember, right? So, this was my first situation. Now, I go for the second one and the second one is if circles touch externally, if circles touch externally, then picture would be something like this. And one immediate situation, what you can think of is obviously one tangent, which is common to both, right? That would be our transverse common tangent. And one situation could be that from outside point P, you try to draw two tangents and they would be called obviously again, direct common tangent. So in all, we have now three common tangents. Two of them are direct ones and one of course, is the transverse. And in the condition column, I have written there R1 plus R2 equal to distance C1, C2. I hope you remember this condition in geometry. You have done in your previous classes, right? Let us move to the next one. And the next case is circles intersect at two points. So, picture would be two intersecting circles, correct? Now, here the transverse tangent is actually not the possibility. The only possibility is from outside point P, you try to draw two tangents and they would be our direct common tangents, right? So, number of tangents, two. And what would be the condition now? Condition you can see yourself. C1, C2 distance is surely smaller now than R1 plus R2, correct? This is easy to see from the figure, understand from the figure. Now, let us move to the next case. And next case is circles touch internally. If circles touch internally, then picture would be something like this, correct? And now again, the transverse part has gone. Only situation perhaps is that you draw one tangent at common, 
you know, like point and what is that common point? Point of contact, where those two circles touch each other. So tangent at the point of contact you can draw and this seems to be the only tangent, right? So number of tangents, if you see, only one common tangent. And what would be the condition? Condition now is distance C1, C2 is absolute value of R1 minus R2. Which one is bigger? We do not know. Which you, you know, like which particular radius you name as R1 and which one as R2. Since we do not know, so we take care and we write absolute value of R1 minus R2. Now, this condition also you have done in your previous classes when you have learned to topic circles in geometry. So, when circles touch internally or the previous case, circle touch externally. These two cases you are surely aware of. Now, let us move to the next case. And the next case is one circle is inside other. So, picture would be something like this. That one circle is inside other, right? Now, do we find any possibility of drawing any type of tangent, whether transverse or direct one? There is no possibility, right? So, we understand that there is no common tangent here. And what would be the condition? Condition says that here distance C1, C2 is smaller than absolute value of R1 minus R2. And once for all, I have written there again that C1, C2 is the distance between the centers. So, anywhere in the previous situations, wherever I have written C1, C2, we mean distance, right? Let us move further. And further is now, now let us talk about common chord of two circles, right? This is also part of our this session. Now, when I say common chord, chord you are aware of. I mean, you have seen this word in your geometry of previous classes. We are talking about two circles also. So, obviously, I expect that two circles and there should be a chord. I mean, not only for one circle, it should be common to both. Then from picture, I can see that these two circles intersect at points P and Q and rest all situation is like previous one only. I am taking equation of one circle as say S1 equal to 0 and other one as S2 equal to 0. Centers I am naming as C1 and C2, right? So that PQ part what I have shown, that segment, this is working as common chord. Okay, so let me write once for all what we mean by common chord. The chord joining the points of intersection of two given circles is called their common chord. Okay. Now, if this is the situation, what is the next thing which immediately comes to your mind? It has to be equation of common chord. How do we find equation of common chord? Now, mind you please, our picture says that common chord is the line segment joining points of intersection of two circles. Now, instead of saying circles, I say it is a line joining points of intersection of two given curves, suppose. Now, I am deliberately saying this. This particular thing you have done when we were doing straight lines in family of lines, right? What was that thing? Whenever you want to find out equation of a curve passing through points of intersection of two given curves, that equation is always written as linear combination of equations of those two given curves, right? So, this similar idea we will be using here. And for that, obviously, I will have to have first equations of two circles. So, one equation of one circle I am taking as x square plus y square plus 2g1x plus 2f1y plus c1 equal to 0. Mind you, please, instead of saying simply g and f, now I am taking care, I am writing g1 and f1. Why? Because in S2, I have to write x square plus y square plus 2g2x plus 2f2y plus c2 equal to 0. Now, these are two given equations. Now, any linear combination would be satisfied by those two points of intersection, means P and Q. This is one thing. And one more thing, what where I want to take your attention is, we are talking about common chord. Chord means it's a line. So, its equation is expected to be a linear equation, means single degree term of x and single degree term of y is expected, right? That means in the linear combination part, we do not want presence of x square and y square. So, what could be the easiest way of finding equation of common chord? And that is when you subtract one from other, right? And that is why I am writing 2x into g1 minus g2 plus 2y into f1 minus f2 plus c1 minus c2 equal to 0. Now, this is actually equation of common chord, which you can remember if you wish to as s1 minus s2 equal to 0. Mind you please why we are doing S1 minus S2 equal to 0, reason I have already given. Now this would be satisfied by those two points of intersection means P and Q and it would be a linear expression. I am talking about that S1 minus S2 part. So this actually describes your common chord. 
Now, one more small thing before we leave, and that is length of the common chord. If you want to find length of the common chord, once for all, you should know how do we do it. Now, length of the common chord actually from the picture is PQ. If C1 and C2 you join, and then if you have shown that common chord as PQ, their point of intersection and naming as M, right? So that PQ is twice of PM. Now you know what that point M is. What we are interested in is PM, correct? And then take twice of it. Now PM, simple exercise, Pythagoras theorem you can apply and it would become finally, I'm talking about the entire length as twice of square root of C1P whole square minus C1M whole square, correct? Now, if you want to name them, then naming I'm writing as 2 square root R square minus P square. What R stands for? R is actually the radius, that is C1P. Right? And what about small p? What I have written there? That is actually the perpendicular distance of, yes, C2 from the common chord. Right? And that is the end of our this particular session. When we meet next time, again we will be getting something new. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you. Hope you have liked this video. To subscribe, click here. And to place order for the book, click here. Thank you.